Welcome back as After Hours continues from GM Place in Vancouver where the Canucks beat the Oilers 4-1 tonight. Pleased to be joined now by Canucks President and General Manager Mike Gillis uh, before we get on to the Olympic discussion and uh, the state of your team. How was Christmas? Uh, it was good. It was good. We had family in and um, took my one day off and now we're back at it. Happy That's with it. your gifts? Always. <laughs> Always. What was the best one? Uh, the best? No, they were all pretty good. They were all pretty good. Do you ever really I don't want to, want to choose one. It will offend somebody. Do you ever really truly get away from the game, though, even when you have a couple of days, or have you been able to separate that at all? From no. no. It, it, it's, um, it's impossible to get away from it. And uh, there's something going on every day, and you just, you know, you, you have to be here. The games are, are really uh, tightly compressed, as you know, and... Um, you know, there's always something to do, even though there aren't any trades happening, but there's always something to do. <laughs> so demanding, though, in the Canadian market. I think Kevin Lowe once said it best to me when I asked him if he got a chance to do any skiing with his wife, Karen, who's a former Olympic medalist. You know, he said, are you kidding? I can't do any of that stuff. I'm the general manager of a team in a Canadian market. Mm -hmm. yeah. I cannot be seen doing that sort of thing. It's challenging, yeah. you know, and uh, there's a lot of media commitments. There's a lot of moving parts, and, uh, and it's really difficult to find some free time. All right, before we talk about the Olympics, uh, I think of greater concern to you, Mike, would be your team simply making the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And you've been outside the top eight for most of the season, just in there tonight as a result of the 4-1 win over the Oilers. But uh, what gives you the confidence this is going to change in the second half of the season and that you will be in the postseason? Well, I think some teams got off to uh, really strong starts and they didn't really suffer any injury issues like we did. And it, it seems like everything gets balanced out in this league at some point. So. Uh, we're hoping some teams will move back a little back, bit in the pack and that we'll start to play the kind of game that we think we can play and be consistent. And if those things happen, I think we'll be in good shape. Mike, you talk about the balancing act. Uh, interesting. Coming into this game, we talked about the fact that you hadn't won or hadn't lost any games in overtime. You mm -hmm. only played in two. You look above you coming into tonight, and Dallas had 11. Do you still feel the same about the, the point for a loss as a general manager? I know it does even itself mm -hmm. out at times, but the, how, what's your feeling when you look at 11 points they have above you in the standings because of that losing And five fewer overtime? wins. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it makes you angry. I mean, we've got... I think 22 wins now, so we're uh, we're right there with the top teams in the league, and we're fighting for a playoff spot. So, but those are the rules; they're the same for everybody. And um, you know, there were games where we felt that our team didn't play as well as it should have, and uh, and consequently, you lost those games and lost an opportunity at least a point. And um, we're now starting to see the team we have. We have a lot of confidence in this group, and we think it's a good team. And uh, if we continue to play like we have the last three weeks, I think we'll be in good shape. Here's a question for you from Pat in Ottawa. Uh, when you took over as GM, you said you wanted to change the culture surrounding the team. How difficult have you found it considering the fans' mood changes with every win and loss? Well, it takes time, you know, and we've, uh, we've done a lot of things behind the scenes that most people don't know about um, in terms of the environment that we've created here and what we've tried to do. And, and I think we have a place now where, where players genuinely want to stay here and play and they want to come here and play. And uh, that's the kind of cultural shift that I wanted to see where this is a place where guys really do want to play here and stay here. So um, we're starting to see that, but it's still early in the process and hopefully we'll get stronger. How much do you talk about uh, with your leadership group ab about the challenges of playing in a hockey crazed market and when things go whether they're going well and maybe the guys get a little ahead of themselves or if they're not going well and they get too hard on themselves. Do you, do you have a lot of discussions with that or do you leave that to the players and the coaches? No, we, we give them advice. We have um, some consultants we've hired to deal with media issues and uh, and more about how we internalize what's being said and done. And you know what, the media here has been very fair, I think, with, uh, with me in particular and with our team for the most part. And... Um, we don't have many complaints, but there are guys that take things to heart, and you just have to make sure they rationalize it correctly. Mike, your team faces a, gar a gargantuan challenge in the new year with you know, that 40-day, 14-game road trip. Mm -hmm. but, uh, no team should ever complain about a road trip after uh, you guys have to face something like that. But earlier tonight in Hockey Night in Canada, it uh, was brought up that Brian Burke is uh, thinking of scrapping game day skates. Uh, it's also... Uh, referred to uh, the fact that some teams are practiced at four in the afternoon and you're on the cutting edge of the sleep deprivation mm -hmm. thing um, that you've hired people to address for your team. So what are you doing uh, out of the ordinary to prepare for, for this uh, road trip? Well, we've, um, we've done detailed analysis about our travel and 
now we're starting to spend more nights in the city that we play in and leave the next day so we get a, a skate in the following morning in that city which is far more like when we play yeah. and um, and we have a, a formula that we use that calculates fatigue levels and when we get to a certain game that's below a certain level that Elaine adjusts our practice adjusts our practice schedule around that and um, you know, oddly enough, the game that we lost in Carolina, which was a real focal point yeah. for this team, that was the lowest level we had all year. And there was nothing we could do about it, just the way it was three games in three and a half days. So, um, but we, we're, trying to, we're trying to look at every possible way to, to get our fatigue levels manageable. And when you play on the West Coast, it's always a concern. Um, but it's coming, and we're still doing work on it. We're still... Um, we're still looking at it, and uh, you know there there are still a few more things we want to do, but you can't introduce everything all at once. You have to do in stages. Last question, Craig, before we go to break. Well, well obviously, uh, on that note, then the challenge of having potentially a third of your lineup playing all through the uh, yeah. Olympics um, in your mind, have you sort of addressed how you're going to deal with that once that comes back? You don't know who's maybe going to go right to the finals, but there has to be some concern of fatigue there as well. Yeah, we've looked at uh, what we're going to do. In immediately before and immediately after the Olympics in terms of travel for our, our players that will be in it. And um, we're taking some steps to get them to the next city in a reasonable time frame. Uh, you know, that, but you're, 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 you're hamstrung by what you have in front of you and you, you just have to try and work within it and do, do the best you can. All right, Mike Gillis, Canucks President and General Manager is our guest on After Hours. More with him when we return to GM Place.